Hello everyone and welcome to Mathematics Coding. In this video, we are going to solve a question which is on the screen right now. It consists of actually three beautiful questions. A question on integration, question on limit, limit of a sequence, and the calculation part of this question is also very interesting. So before moving ahead, I would like to request all of you to please like the video, subscribe to our channel, and do share it with your fellow aspirants. Now let us read the question and solve it. The question says, define gamma n is equals to 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4 and so on up to 1 by n minus log n, where n belongs to natural number. Phi is equals to root 5 plus 1 by 2. Now, if i n is equals to the definite integration of this one, when you look at the integrand here and when you look at the limit, the first thing that comes into the mind is, application of a particular property of definite integration because the numerator and denominator may one factor is similar if i can apply the property and convert this integrand into an easier form then it would be easier for us to handle the integration so what is that property i will be using we will see in the question we will see in the solution b and also they have defined limit k tends to infinity n is from 1 to k e raised to the power 2 power n minus e power minus 2 power n upon denominator whole power 1 by 2 power n. Then choose the correct options. Of correct options, we are going to choose only after getting the values of i n and b n. Okay. So first of all, we are going to concentrate on the two questions. One question is getting the value of i n. The second question is getting the value of b n. Let us start with the first one. In the first one, as I told you, I'm getting a hint of using the property. Which property I was talking about? I was talking about the property of definite integration, which says that integral a to b fx dx can easily be replaced with integral f of a plus b minus x dx. That means both these will have the same value. Why I'm interested in using this property? Because I feel that after using this property, it might be possible that denominator will not change. Numerator may I will be getting this as the factor. I'll add the two integrals and we'll start getting my answer in a very convenient way. Okay, so what I have to do is I have to replace every x in this integral with phi plus phi square. But see, here we have phi cube minus x. If I replace every x with phi plus phi square, I will be getting entirely new denominator, right? So that is why now I'm interested in checking, first of all, ki what is the relation between phi plus phi square and phi cube? How we are going to check this? Definitely by doing the little calculation part. Phi we already have. What is going to be the value of phi square? So you can see that phi square will become 1 by 4 root 5 plus 1 ka whole square, which ultimately gives me 5 plus 1 plus 2 root 5. Or you can say that you are actually getting 3 plus root 5 divided by 2. This is phi square. Implies if you calculate phi plus phi square, that means if you add root 5 plus 1 by 2 to this quantity, you will be getting 4 plus 2 root 5 upon 2. Or you can say that you are actually getting 2 plus root 5. This is the value of phi plus phi square. But what do you say about phi cube? So if you are talking about phi cube means you are actually multiplying phi square with phi. I am going to multiply this one that is 3 plus root 5 by 2 with the root 5 plus 1 by 2. It will become 1 by 4. Now you can see the numerator will become 5 plus 3 that is 8. And all root 5 terms will become 4 root 5. Ultimately, when you simplify it, what you are getting is 2 plus root 5 only. That means right now, we are getting 5, 5 cube is equals to 5 plus 5 square. Okay, what we are getting here is 5 plus 5 square is equals to 5 cube. Correct. Okay, so now my question is almost solved and we will be getting the answer. How we are going to proceed with it? So first of all, though, I'm going to write down the question. What is the question? They are saying that i n is equal to integral phi to phi square. Numerator is log. Numerator is log power n log x plus gamma n. Coming to the denominator, we have one term as log power n log phi cube minus x plus gamma n plus now we have log power n log x plus gamma n dx, right? This is the question. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this particular property here, keeping in mind that phi plus phi square can be written as phi cube. So I'm going to replace every x with phi plus phi square minus x, or I can say that I'm going to replace every x with phi cube minus x. If we write it like this, then the value of integral is not going to change. And you will find that denominator is also not going to change. After the application of this property, we are still going to get the same denominator, right? We are getting the same denominator, okay? Since we are getting the same denominator, I'm going to add the two integrals now. So when you add them together, again, just check the numerator and denominator becomes similar. We are getting same denominator, same numerator. So ultimately, it reduces to 1 dx, correct? We are getting it as 1 dx means the answer turns out to be phi square minus phi. But this is the value of 2i. And what actually is phi square minus phi? So just now we calculated phi square. Let us go back to phi square. This is phi square and we have to subtract phi from it. Yani you have to subtract, first of all, this is phi square. You have to subtract root 5 plus 1 by 2 from it. What we are going to get? Root 5 will get cancelled. The value of root 5 will get cancelled. We are going to get it as equal to 1, right? 3 by 2 minus 1 by 2. It reduces to 1. It reduces to 1 means 2i ka value I am getting 1. It implies i n turns out to be 1 by 2, right? So we got the value of i n. I am going to mark it as capital A. So we have the value of i n. Now we need to go and check the value of bn. As I told you, first of all, we are going to concentrate on two questions. One is in, the other one is bn. So now I'm going to solve for bn. So solving bn itself is a very beautiful question. Let us see how we are going to handle it. Chale, to start karenge. Now we are solving for bn. So I'm going to write here bn. What is bn? bn they have given is equals to limit k tends to infinity by n is from 1 to k e power 2 power n minus e power minus 2 power n upon e power 2 power n plus e power minus 2 power n whole raised to the power 1 by 2 power n. So this is the limit that now we have to evaluate. Because on the right hand side you can see two things. One is a continued product. And second, the index is also of the same variable n. That is why I'm going to take log both the sides and then I'm going to handle it. So let us take log both the sides. It will become ln bn. Okay, this will become ln bn. Now the right hand side can be written as limit k tends to infinity 1 by 2 power n 1 by 2 raised to the power n. Achha, pi is also there. So I will write first of all, the pi will convert to sigma. n is from 1 to k, 1 by 2 power n. And then we will have ln e power 2 power n minus e power minus 2 power n divided by e power 2 power n plus e power minus 2 raised to the power n. Right? This is what I need to calculate. Again, how we are going to proceed with it? To solve this question, now what I'm going to do is, I will be writing by putting the values of n here. And that is limit k tends to infinity as it is. Start putting the values of k. For k is equals to 1, what we are getting is 1 by 2 ln e square minus e power minus 2. And after that minus ln e square plus e power minus 2. I am using the property of log over here and writing accordingly. This is the very first term that we have. Plus now writing down the second term. So it will give me 1 by 2 ka square. So 1 by 4. Now you have ln e power 4 minus e power minus 4 minus ln e power 4 plus e power minus 4. Keep on writing it like this till you reach the last term. That means 1 by 2 raised to the power k. Right? Ultimately I have to put n is equals to k. So I am keeping it. ln e raised to the power 2 power k minus e power minus 2 power k minus ln e power 2 raised to the power k plus e power 2 power k like this, right? Okay, now I'm going to add them together. Why I'm going to add them together and how we are going to add them together. We can observe that over here when you factorize it, 
definitely one of the factor is going to be e square minus e power minus 2. I will be getting one of the factor like that. Okay. Here also in the next term, that means whatever you are getting e power e1 minus e power minus the same even number, definitely e square minus e power minus 2, you are going to get over there. So I will be creating those expression. That means wherever it is possible, let's factorize. This is what I'm trying to say. So kya karenge abhi? In the next step, I'm going to rewrite it as this is equals to limit k tends to infinity. And after that, the very first term will become 1 by 2 ln e square minus e power minus 2 minus 1 by 2 ln e square plus e power minus 2. Second term. Concentrate on the second term now. So plus 1 by 4. Now look at the second term carefully. It will be ln e square minus e power minus 2 plus ln e square plus e power minus 2 minus ln e power 4 plus e power minus 4. Right? This is the second term that we will be getting. Similarly, let us write down the third term as well. So it will become 1 by 8 e power minus 8 minus e power 8 or e power 8 minus e power minus 8. Uga. So on factorization, you will be getting it as e square minus e power minus 2 plus ln e square plus e power minus 2 plus ln e power 4 plus e power minus 4 and then minus ln e power 8 minus e power 8 plus e power minus 8. Right? This is going to be the third term. If you keep on writing it like this till the end terms and start clubbing the similar terms together, then what we are going to get? Now, let me show you. I will be clubbing all these terms together. So, what actually we are going to get? Limit k tends to infinity. Aega. You can take ln e square minus e power minus 2 common. So, you will be left out with 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 16 till the last term. The last term is going to be 1 by 2 power k, right? Now I'm going to club the remaining terms. So remaining terms means you can see that we also have the term. So let me write down here plus sign. ln e square plus e power minus 2 term is also there, which will be having the very first term minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 8. Keep writing till you reach the last term 1 by 2 power k, correct? Then I will also have the term plus ln e power 4 plus e power minus 4, right? The next term that we will have will be like this. What is the very first term? e power 4 plus e power minus 4 has the very first coefficient as minus 1 by 4. Then we have plus 1 by 8, plus 1 by 16 and so on. So let me write it over here. Minus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 8 plus 1 by 16. Keep writing till you reach 1 by 2 power k. And so on till the last term. Are we last term means what? Till the last term means we are going to write down the last term as ln e raised to the power 2 power k plus e power minus 2 raised to the power k. This is going to come along with only 1 by 2 power k. This is the last term that we will be getting. Right? Now adding all these sequences. As you can see that this is a GP. Here also this is a GP. This is a GP and so on. When k is tending towards infinity, I am going to deal with the very first term separately. I can say that it is an infinite GP that I am going to get here. Right? I am going to get here infinite GP. This infinite GP, this infinite GP uh, will have the sum equals to a upon 1 minus r. It reduces to 1. Right? This infinite GP will have the sum equals to a upon 1 minus r. It reduces to 1. So, I am just going to write here the very first term will reduce to ln e square minus e power minus 2. Right? The first term will be this one. <coughs> Look at this one. When you find out the sum of this quantity, when you find out the sum of this term, how many terms are there? So you are actually starting with 2 square, then 2 cube, then 2 power k. And it is k minus 1 terms. When you find out the sum of this GP, the, the sum turns out to be 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 raised to the power k. Okay? This is what you will be getting. This is what we will be getting means I can write down this term as 1 by 2 and minus 1 by 2 will get cancelled and we will be getting just 1 by 2 raised to the power k as the coefficient of this term. Here also when you find out the sum of this GP, 
Having the first term as 1 by 8 and number of terms, this is 2 cube, this is 2 power 4, this is 2 power k. Any k minus 2 terms will be there. So when you find out the sum, it turns out to be 1 by 4 minus 1 by 2 power k. Again, this 1 by 4 and 1 by 4 will get cancelled. Here also the coefficient will turn out to be 1 by 2 power k. And the last term over here also, you will get the coefficient as 1 by 2 raised to the power k. So I can say that except the first term, remaining terms, what I am getting is minus 1 by 2 power k, right? We are getting minus 1 by 2 raised to the power k. And the remaining terms, I can write in the sigma notation form as sigma ln e power 2 raised to the power r, right? e power 2 raised to the power r plus e power minus 2 raised to the power r. Jaha r ki value will start from 1 and will go till k, right? The series is going to start from 1 and will go till k. It will be going till k. Okay, fine. So you can see that it is starting from 1, 2, 3 till 2 power k. I need to get the answer for this one. We have to put limit k tends to infinity, right? So till now we have the value of first term. Now I'm interested in getting the value for this second term. So again, the calculation part is really interesting. So just see how we are going to solve it. The first term I'm writing ln e square minus e power minus 2. The second term is limit k tends to infinity, 1 by 2 power k. Now, sigma r is from 1 to k means you can write it as sigma ln. Just watch carefully. It will be ln e power 2 power r plus ln 1 plus e power minus 2 raised to the power r plus 1. I have actually taken this term common and separated. That means using the properties of log, you can write it like this r is from 1 to k. Again, I'm splitting the sigmas now. Splitting the sigma means what? The first term is still ln e square minus e power minus 2 minus limit k tends to infinity 1 by 2 power k and this is, what is this? This is again a gp 2 raised to the power r karke we are going to get the gp of k terms. So, sigma uh, 2 raised to the power r. So 2 raised to the power r or let me write it in the sigma form only. I'll write it as sigma r is from 1 to k, 2 raised to the power r. Coming to the second sigma, so we can write minus limit k tends to infinity 1 by 2 power k ln 1 plus sigma ln 1 plus 2 e raised to the power minus 2 power r plus 1. Correct. Okay, let's proceed. This term is going to come as it is. Second term, yes, I can find out the sum of this GP. So, I'm going to replace it with the sum. A into 1 minus R. What is R? 2 raised to the power number of terms upon 1 minus R. This is what we are getting. Coming to the third term, limit K tends to infinity. 1 by 2 power K. Removing sigma, you will get ln. Keep on putting the values of r. So, r is actually starting from 1 now. r starts from 1 means I can write down the very first term as 1. So, we will be writing it as 1 plus e power minus 4. The second term that we will be getting is 1 plus e power minus 8. The third term that we will be getting will be 1 plus e power minus 16. And like this, you will keep getting the different terms. Till the last factor, let me write down the last factor. 1 plus e power minus 2 raised to the power k plus 1. Correct? This is what we are going to get. The first term, still the same. I am not writing that. The second term, now I can think of writing it. Why? Because this is 2. This is minus 1. So, we are getting minus 2 here. When you take limit k tends to infinity over here, what actually you are getting is limit k tends to infinity. Limit k tends to infinity minus 2 over here, then 1 by 2 power k minus 1. Correct? This is what we will be getting. So, limit k tends to infinity means this term is going to become 0. So, you will get plus 2 over here. Fine. That we will be writing in the next step. Now, I am going to concentrate on first of all this product. I will write this product as capital P. What I need to solve is limit k tends to infinity 1 by 2 power k ln p. 
So I'll come back to this P, but before that, I need the value of P. So before coming back to the star relation, let us find out what is P. So let us find out what is P. Let us solve for P. So solving for P now, what do we have for P? The value of P that we have is 1 plus e power minus 4, 1 plus e power minus 8, 1 plus e power minus 16, and so on till 1 plus e power minus 2 raised to the power k plus 1. It is nothing but a GP. Where is the GP? So you will just observe it now. I'm going to multiply this whole expression with 1 plus e power minus 4. Sorry, 1 minus e power minus 4. Okay, the whole expression will be multiplied with 1 minus e power minus 4. And obviously for adjusting it, we will have to divide it. Now look at the numerator, the product of these two. When you multiply these two, what you are getting is 1 minus e power minus 8, which looks similar to the next factor. Multiply them together and you are going to get 1 minus e power minus 16, which is similar to the next factor. Multiply them and you are going to get 1 minus e power minus 32, right? So keep on doing it like this. If you continue like this till the last factor, I can say that numerator of P will become 1 minus e raised to the power. Now what should I write? e raised to the power minus 2 power k plus 2, right? It will become e raised to the power minus 2 raised to the power k plus 2 because e power 16 thought it became 16 into 2. E power minus 8 became e power minus 16. So e power minus 2 k plus 1 will become e power minus 2 raised to the power k plus 1 into 2, which ultimately gives me this thing in the numerator, while denominator is still 1 minus e power minus 4, right? So I am going to replace this value, or I am going to replace p with this value in the star relation. So where is our star relation? Over here. So I am getting this expression as same. The second one, just now we have seen that it will convert to plus 2. So already we have a negative sign here. So I'll write it as minus 2. Then I'll go to the third term. Limit k tends to infinity. 1 by 2 power k. 1 by 2 power k. Then we have ln p. What is p? Now we have seen that p ka value turns out to be 1 minus e power minus 2 raised to the power k plus 2 upon 1 minus e power minus Four, right? Let us put the limit over here. When you put the limit k tends to infinity, it will become zero. So this is something like a finite quantity and upon infinity, right? We will be getting something finite upon infinity. Finite upon infinity means it is tending towards zero. So this whole limit actually goes towards zero. Now if this limit is going towards zero, then we are left out only with some quantity. What is that some quantity? The value that we are left out with is ln bn is equals to. So what is the value we are getting here? We are getting it as ln e square minus e power minus 2. So let us write it ln e square minus e power minus 2 and minus 2 which can be written as ln e square you can take common plus ln. 1 minus e power minus 4 minus 2. So finally, I can say that bn actually turns out to be 1 minus e power minus 4. So now I have the value of bn as well. So now I have the value of capital IN, I have the value of bn. Now I'll go back to the question and we'll see what all things we have to check. What are the options given in the question? So after evaluating all these values of an and IN and bn, I'm going back here and writing down these two values. So regarding i n, I have the value 1 by 2. Regarding b n, we got the value just now. And the value for b n that we are getting is 1 minus e power minus 4. Now with the help of these two, can we identify which options are correct? So I'll start checking the option from option number D. Option number D says that check whether log 1 minus b n plus 8 i n is 0 or not. So, okay, fine. Let us check. 1 minus bn means e power minus 4. So, this term will convert to log e power minus 4 and plus 8 times 1 by 2. You can check that what we are getting is actually 0 itself. So, that means option number D is a correct option. I selected it. 
Now coming to option number C. Option number C says that e power 4 bn. What is e power 4 bn? Let us check. e power 4 bn as you can see is nothing but e power 4 minus 1. Correct? e power 4 minus 1 means e power 4 is fine. But 1 code definitely I can write as twice of i n. So e power 4 bn is absolutely equals to e power 4 minus 2 i n. That is why I am going to select option number C as well. Now coming to option number B, which says that k is from 0 to infinity. What you need to find out is the sigma. That means you need to find out i n plus i n square. In fact, i n power 0, so you will have to start. So i n power 0, after that i n power 1, then you have i n ka square and so on up to infinity. What is i n power 0? It is nothing but 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 ka square. So, in finite GP with the first term 1 and the common ratio 1 by 2, what should I write? The answer is going to be A upon 1 minus R. That means ultimately the answer turns out to be 2. Answer is 2 means option number B is not the correct option. I'm not going to use it. And now we are left out with option number A. In option number A, I don't need I n value. I don't even need the value of B n. Now, this is entirely a new question from what we have solved till now. Yes, I know the value of gamma n. They have given me a sequence over here. But now I need to find out the limit tendence to infinity gamma n upon n. Now, what gamma n upon n? How we are going to solve it? So, how we are going to solve it? Again, let us move on to this question now. How we are going to solve the option number A? So, for option number A, for option number A, just a moment. Hmm. For option number A, first of all, let me write down what is gamma n. It is 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 and so on till 1 by n minus log n. Correct? Where n belongs to natural number as given in the question. What I need to evaluate is limit n tends to infinity gamma n upon n. So basically you can see that numerator is a sequence, denominator is a sequence. And denominator is a sequence which is positive and strictly increasing, right? Because it is strictly increasing and positive, that is why using stoll cesaro theorem, I can rewrite it as limit n tends to infinity, gamma n plus 1 minus gamma n upon n plus 1 minus n. So the key to solve this option number A is using Stoll's cesaro theorem. We are going to use Stoll's Cesaro theorem over here. And according to this numerator and denominator, according to this theorem, if you have the denominator, a sequence which is strictly increasing and positive, then this limit can be equated to this one. So instead of solving this, I'm going for this sequence. Let us find out what is going to be the answer. So writing down the numerator and the denominator. Well, you can see that denominator has converted to 1. So let us go to the numerator now. What is numerator? Gamma n plus 1. Gamma n plus 1 means you will be writing it as 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 till 1 upon n plus 1 minus log n plus 1. I am going to subtract from it gamma n which will be 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 till 1 by n and minus log n. Well, when you subtract these two, what you are going to get, you will find that one se lekar one by n ka all the terms we will cancel because they are similar with the opposite sign we are getting here. So I am left out only with 1 upon n plus 1 n minus log n plus 1 plus log n. So basically I can write it like this. Or you can say that you can write it as limit n tends to infinity, limit n tends to infinity, 1 upon n plus 1 minus log 1 plus 1 by n. When n is going towards infinity, you can see that this term will go towards 0. This will become 0. That means only log 1 is left, which itself is 0. So ultimately, the answer to this question must be 0. So now you can go back and check option number A as well. So I'm going back to the question and you can see that option number A says that the limit is 0. So definitely this option is also going to be Correct. So I hope now each and every option of the question is clear to everyone. 
I hope you enjoyed this question, which was actually three questions. All the three questions were very beautiful. And we have solved one by one karke, we have checked all the four options, right? So let us bring an end to the video here only. See you in the next video. Till then, take care and bye-bye.